Good morning. Welcome to St. Mark's online worship service. We are St. Mark's United Methodist Church in Indy Atlantic, Florida. And I'm Richard Jones, the lead pastor. We're so, so grateful that you're here this third Sunday of Advent. Before we start our worship service, a couple of announcements. First off, tonight, December 13th, at 4.30 on our worship of the lawn, on the lawn, we're gonna have a all out Christmas hymn sing and Christmas carol uh, time of singing uh, all our favorites. And it's gonna be a, just a great time of sharing. So I hope you can come out and be a part of that tonight at 4.30 out on the lawn at 2030 Highway A1A in, in the Atlantic, Florida. Also on December 20th, a Sunday, in addition to our waterfront worship service, which will be at 7.30, and our worship on the lawn service, which will be at 4.30, we are going to have a special Christmas service in the sanctuary, in person, socially distanced, and wearing masks at 11 a.m. Now, we have to have people RSVP for this service because we can only have about 100 uh, in the sanctuary for social distancing purposes. And uh, you will have already received an email or will receive an email uh, inviting you to the service and um, asking you to RSVP. You hit the RSVP button and follow the directions and um, it'll ask you how many people will be coming with you so that we'll know how, to, how many to expect in your party. And we, um, this time of year, we always have our uh, end of the year fundraiser called the Tree of Lights. And the Tree of Lights is um, a way that we honor those loved ones and, and we place um, uh, uh, our gifts in memory or in honor of, of people. And uh, that uh, lights up a tree. Usually it's in our narthex, but this year it's outside in front of the church. And, um, for every gift that is donated, a, a light bulb is turned on. And um, we, um, we want to read the names of those that have given and those that they're giving in honor of. So this is our tree of light so far at, to this date. Uh, Sharon Apon is giving uh, her donation in honor of St. Mark's staff and volunteers. Audrey Sansone is giving her donation in memory, in memory of Hank Sansone. Thomas Cray giving his donation in memory of Sheldon and Ruth Cray and Vess and Jen Vosters. Diane Mackey is giving her donation in memory of her dad, Richard Flesher. Sue Murphy and Daniel Thomas are giving their donation in memory of loved ones. We thank you all for your gifts and we continue to celebrate um, this season of giving through our Tree of Lights. Thank you for joining us this morning. I hope you enjoy the service. Good morning. Happy to see everybody this morning. And today I get to invite you into our living room so you can see our Christmas tree and our beautiful angel. That's what happens with technology. Sometimes you have to just tape it at home. You know, this week I read the newspapers and I listened to the news and our country is divided and in crisis and they're predicting so many more deaths and sickness from this horrible disease that's just taking our lives every day. And all I wanted to do was crawl into bed and cover my head. But I won't do that. No, I refuse to give in to the devil as he's trying to just fill me with fear and take away my joy and my excitement about the coming of Jesus. And you know why? Because I have an old church choir singing in my soul. I have a sweet salvation and it's beautiful. I have a heart overflowing because it's been restored. There ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. 
and I want to share that joy with you. One way we can do that is from Psalm 95, verse 1 and 2. Come, let us sing out loud to the Lord. Let's raise a joyful shout to the rock of our salvation. Let's come before him with thanks. Let's shout songs of joy to him. And we can do that this afternoon at 4.30 out on the lawn. All we have to do is wear those darn masks and refrain from giving each other hugs. But we can just sing our hearts out to all the Christmas songs that Jacob will help us to sing by playing his guitar for us. Will you pray with me now? Oh God, I lift my hands in praise and thanksgiving. You give us hope when there is no hope. You give us songs of praise to sing. You give us the gospel that tells us all about your son and what he brought to our world. Lord, you are our salvation. Father, show us the way to stand up against these things that the devil is trying to use to destroy our faith and our trust. Remind us daily that we are your hands and feet. We fight the disease as we care for those who are sick. We depend on your leadership to those who lead our country. And Lord, we will never forget that it's you who is in control. This is my Father's world. And so we pray the prayer of Jesus, the prayer that covers everything. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Sunday of Advent. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress, persecution or famine, nakedness or peril or sword? No. In all things, we are more than conquerors through the one who loved us. We are sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Advent 2020, a time that begins our new Christian year, a time of hope signaling the end of a year of trials and sadness and separation. God's presence and faithful promises in the midst of our pandemics assure us that we're not alone. God with us, the Prince of Peace, invites us to participate in the conspiracy of Christmas. This invitation begins as a gift of gratitude that moves us to a space of divine influence, paralleling Christ's incarnate gift of life in our world. There we are empowered to protest 
against the evil of this world and shine the light of justice and mercy in every downtrodden heart. We light the candle of protest because all creation is crying out for God's plan to be revealed in us. This is a plan God has placed into action from before time began and has placed in our hearts for us to live out. The incarnation of God's mercy, justice, and peace in the babe of Bethlehem signals us to action for the glory of our holy and righteous Savior. Our scripture verse for today is from Luke chapter 1, verse 46 through 55. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He, his mercy is for those who fear him. From generation to generation, he has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promises he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Let us pray. Heavenly God, we thank you for this day, for your mercies are new revealing to us your desire for wholeness, for peace, for justice, that we would walk with you in the glory of your light. Illumine our hearts today, this third Sunday of Advent, as we come with you and we come in anticipation of your arrival for this Christmas season to be all that you want it to be. In Jesus' name, amen. If Mary and Joseph were alive today, they probably would be traveling on a Greyhound bus or probably hitching a ride across the country with whomever might pick them up and set, take them from point A to point B. Maybe they would be trying to find a place to live in the cheap side of town, one of those places to live like those that have the rent for week by week, not able to afford a monthly rent. Joseph would probably be trying to cash his last paycheck, um, trying to take it to one of those payday places, right? And get a loan with a very high interest rate, just in order for him to get more money, maybe to buy some groceries to pay the bills, or even for whatever thing, whatever Mary might need. A loan, of course, he could never repay. They might just have to settle because without any money or any resources, they might just have to settle for staying under one of those highway overpasses. They might have to stay under a bridge somewhere just to keep out of the cold, night wind. If Joseph and Mary were alive today, they might also be refugees fleeing from the tyranny of an evil ruler or governor or president, risking their lives across country lines to try and get to safety. They would be persecuted for their political beliefs there would be refugees, maybe also refugees displaced by war, 
displaced because their house was just collateral damage from some drone strike because some high target um, person lived by and they were targeted for the good of someone's political career or agenda for a war that had nothing to do with them, but they have no place to live. They have nowhere to go. And unless Joseph wants to join some kind of militia he doesn't believe in, they're fleeing for their lives. Just collateral damage in the eyes of a, in the eyes of a powerful and uncaring world. They're numbered among those that are unacceptable, casual, uh, acceptable casualties in exchange for this exchange of land or exchange of power for those that can have the weapons to do so. If Mary and Joseph were alive today, they would have no health care. They would have no prenatal visits to the baby doctor. They would have no idea of the health or the well-being of their unborn child, much less the well-being of Mary or even of Joseph. They wouldn't know what their preconditions are because they can't afford any kind of doctor. And the last time they might have donned the doors of an emergency room, the bills were really high. If Mary and Joseph were alive today, you and I might just have passed them along the way here on our way to church or on our way to wherever we're going because they were standing out in the cold on the side of the highway or of at the stoplight holding up a sign saying, we'll work for food. Please help. Hungry. We have no money. If Mary and Joseph were alive today, and this is what their life would be, what would be our response? What is our response to those people who are like them that God has placed before us in order for us to make a difference? Now, we know that they would be one of these people because everything about them that the Bible tells us indicates that they were just like these people people that are homeless, people who suffered under unjust laws. They themselves were being persecuted and they were suffering from the results of a, of a power-hungry despot who didn't care about their lives, didn't care about the life of their child. He actually orders the killing of hundreds of thousands of children in order to kind of keep himself in power. They were fleeing for their lives. They had no one to protect them. They had no congressman to call and no city council member to hear them out. More than likely because of all the gossip swirling around their relationship and the fact that Mary was pregnant before they were together and the fact that uh, Joseph decided to, to keep his, uh, his vows to Mary and, and because it was somewhat uh, of you know, of a, of a scandal, more than likely some of their family members had already disowned them. Their religious family members disowned them because they would have considered them unclean. They were alone in the world with only their faith in God to keep them safe. We know that uh, Mary and Joseph would need a miracle, maybe several miracles, angels and other unexpected people. And this is what the story of Christmas is about. This is what the conspiracy of Christmas brings to light and confronts us with this way of which the savior of the world came into the world. He was unwanted, he was unexpected, but they needed a miracle and they received many blessings many miracles like the shepherds who came to their side and echoed the glorious songs of the angels. They received foreign aid from these strangers that we call the wise men. They got angelic guidance and visions and dreams to escape to Egypt in order to be safe. 
These are the facts that we know about the story. They shouldn't have survived all of this oppression and this injustice. It just seems too much to bear. All of this darkness bearing down on them, how could they have survived? And that's really the issue because thousands every day, thousands, millions ever since then have not survived. They don't survive. They do despair and they are, they do fall under the, the weight of the disparaging oppression from the lack of clean water, for example, or of the inhumane working conditions that they have to be uh, living in or of starvation because they are looking for food wherever they can. But Mary and Joseph live. The Christ child within them is the divine presence of God's protest against the powers of this world. This divine child and Joseph and Mary their lives declare a way that is against the foreign and evilness of the way that many in this world treat others. The divine child they were birthing was the light of the world. He is and was the overcomer and redeemer of all, the one who would protest against all the injustices and the evil oppressing his creation. Their courage in going against all the odds uh, for the sake of this hope is a life of protest that calls forth all of creation. It calls forth you and I to revolt and to resist against the darkness and magnify the glory of God in the midst of what is God's good creation because God is making all things new. And what we read today was traditionally known as Mary's song or the Magnificat. And it's a beautiful song. It's a beautiful and well recited um, uh, poem and prayer. But it is a protest song. It is a declaration of a future that is occurring and is real, but that stands against and above the injustices of this world. Listen to the declaration that it makes. Listen to the vision of God's kingdom that Mary proclaims because it is already present in her and around us in this world, calling us to a different reality. These are her words. The mighty one has done great things for me. All generations will consider me blessed because because he has lifted up the lowly. He has shown his strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. Mary's prayer is a call to protest the injustices of this world. In her words, we sense that she has experienced the pain and the poverty of her people. And by extension, she has experienced the brokenness in a sense of our human experience, the brokenness of humanity that allows people to suffer and go forth in silence, to go hungry in the darkness and to be in despair in the shadow of affluence. It is a protest against the weakness, really, of tyrannies, of tyrannies like King Herod. It is a protest against unjust laws that devalue the significance of people and lifts up the divine calling of every human being. It is a call to raise a hallelujah in the presence of our enemies, echoing the rebelliousness of the prophets and of the psalmists of old, who also caught a vision of what would be and could be in the presence of God and for the glory of God, for his kingdom. It places, you see, Mary 
at the forefront of this conspiracy of Christmas, at the forefront of this movement calling for justice, for mercy, and for a way of life that walks humbly, but assuredly with God, our Creator. So this Advent, God is calling us to protest, to protest against the evilness of the world, to protest against sin, against brokenness, against those that would allow hunger and injustice and despair to continue in order to uphold their own personal and powerful positions. From the beginning of time, God has called upon us through the call of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Moses, and those in, in the stories of the prophets, now in the life of Mary and Joseph, in the life of Jesus as he grows up. God is preveniently calling us to this protest to join with his spirit in giving hope, to depose and to tear down the powerful um, places that bring fear and hold people down, especially those powerful forces that tear apart our lives and tear, apart, tear us apart from the living hope who is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That we are to work together this Advent season to allow God to prepare our hearts for a greater work that he wants to fulfill in us. Remember that scripture that says, he who began, uh, who began a good work in you will be sure to fulfill it. This is the opportunity that we can give the spirit to complete within us the work of protest, the work of his prevenient love to improve the lives of those around us, to make a difference in the lives of the most vulnerable, to help those that are downtrodden and to come against a society that wants to just to forget them and to move on. This is what it means also, I think, to be blessed. And this is what it means, I think, that when Mary said she was blessed, it was this, that her eyes were open to this reality, that the, the, the Lord's love and the Lord's power and the Lord's peace brings our lives into a place of magnitude that we can make a difference. And that through our lives, we could magnify the power and love and ability of Christ, our King, to undo the evil of the world. And this is the conspiracy of Christmas. This is a protest against evil works that divide and destroy. It is a conspiracy to build up and be a part of the kingdom of life, the kingdom of hope, to build a world that is equitable, good, and reflective of the all-giving, all-graceful, all-redeeming, love and merciful comforter king everlasting god prince of peace the rule and reign of our savior and christ glory to god in the highest and goodwill to all people for unto us a child is born the one who will lead us and guide us to a place of safety, to a life of wonderful, everlasting love and peace. Something that comes against all and everything that is darkness, that is broken, that is a lie because he is the truth, the everlasting God. Let us pray. Give us courage, O Holy Spirit, today to follow in the footsteps of Mary and Joseph, to follow in the footsteps of those who came alongside what you were doing in those days, that we could be a part of renewal and restoration 
in our neighborhoods, in our communities, by just allowing your light to shine through us. That we would protest the darkness and protest anything that would uh, tear people down or, or tear and divide us, that we would continue to work towards building your kingdom here on earth. And that as you approach and as your light and your glory shines brighter, we would be called blessed, that we would bless others, that we would cry to you and sing for joy for all the opportunities that you're giving us to overcome, to shine your light in the darkness, and to not only be those people that have been transferred from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light, but be those that help to maneuver and bring others forth to a life of significance that magnify you through their love for each other and for others as we come together under your reign and of your rulership, which is one of peace, mercy, and hope. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you for joining us today in our time of worship. And we know that uh, Christmas is around the corner, just a couple of weeks away. And I hope that you don't get caught up in all the frenzy and all the chaos of maybe trying to get those last minute gifts or trying to schedule anything that uh, might, uh, you know, it might be important to schedule a party or try and get in contact with others and, and, and try and make this Christmas what we want it to be, but that we would make space for the Lord to come into our lives, uh, to reorder and reorganize our priorities and allow the Spirit, the Spirit's protests of our anxiousness and of our uh, stressful lives so that His peace could reign in all of our hearts. And I hope that you can continue to be in connection and to stay um, uh, uh, connected to each other and to us uh, online or uh, sending us a, an email or connecting with us uh, on our website. We'd love to hear from you and we'd love to know um, how you're doing and how things uh, are going this Christmas. And remember to join us on December 20th for our live stream at 11 a.m. And uh, our Christmas Eve service will be on uh, the December 24th at um, five o'clock. And we will be um, having a candlelight uh, service out on the lawn. And I uh, hope everyone comes out to that as well. Now receive the benediction. May the light of God's glorious grace and peace provide you the way, the truth, and the life to know his wonderful gifts of hope for you and for everyone. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen and amen. <laughs>